So in this video, I want to talk to you about chasing your goals because basically it just does work. Like how many times have you really like, be honest, have you set a goal? You've chased that goal. You worked hard to get that goal only to burn out, quit. And at the end of the year, the next year, you set it again, or you just give up on it, or you just get tired of it. You see, chasing a goal by nature is chasing something. It just doesn't work. And so we're going to take a deep look at why that doesn't work and what successful people that consistently get their goals and create amazing realities do instead. So with that said, before I do, I want to invite you to like, subscribe and share. It really helps. Uh, the algorithm hasn't been marketing me much. So anything is awesome. I really appreciate it. And definitely comment if you find something in this video helpful. Now let's get started. So what is this idea? Well, if you look at the emotional scale, apathy, grief, fear, lust, which is the wanting category, the chasing category, anger and pride, when you're in wanting, it has a psychic, like an energetic sense of pushing away in it, right? There's this idea that if you want something in the subconscious mind, you just don't have it. I can't want something and have it. And if I amplify the want a lot, if I sit there and think to myself, I really want a million dollars. I really want the girl of my dreams. I really want this amazing dating life. And I just want it, want it, want it. And I don't get out of the want. I'm going to be in my subconscious mind, creating a presupposition that forever I am stuck in wanting. And eventually you're going to get frustrated and you're going to crash down into the lower emotions from all this wanting, pushing, forcing, and chasing, and you're not going to get it. Now, what do the most successful people in the world do instead? Well, they don't play in this game of want. Maybe they want something in the beginning. That's fine. It's really good. I mean, I kind of want a new car. I kind of want a hot girl in my life. I kind of want to start a business. Nothing wrong with that. The question is, do you get stuck there? Is it like something you can't get out of? Do you think that if you want more and you want really hard, you're going to eventually get there? Because you won't. So what do we do instead? What do you got to do instead is you got to move out of want into choice. You see, choice puts you into the state of decisiveness, into the state of action, into the state of definiteness of purpose and allows you to project the image of something already done as done. It allows you to say, you know what? I no longer want that new car. I am getting that new car. And notice the image in your mind changes with that statement. Picture yourself wanting the brand new car of your dreams. Now picture yourself as choosing to go get it and having it and feel that difference. That choice is really powerful. Now, some of you might be saying, well, I don't have the resources to go get that car. So how can I choose it? Well, the first step is to choose it. This car is going to happen and it's already happened. It's not going to happen. It's already happened. I already have it. It's just a matter of that reality manifesting physically now, but energetically in my energetic world, it's already manifest. And I got a great video on that. I did just recently, definitely check that out. We'll put a link in this video to that. And uh, here, there'll be a picture here somewhere about it. Now, this sense that you already have it is really important. Neville Goddard loves to talk a lot about this. You already have it. It's yours. It's done. It's not like something you're going to get. It's, it's something that's already here. And that definiteness of purpose gets created from this sense you already have it. And then the right people, situations, and actions did, you know, inspired actions show up to bring it into reality. Now, how do we create this feeling that we already have it when we don't think we have the resources, the money, the opportunity, I don't have the education? How do you create this feeling that will then activate this part of your gut brain, this part of your super conscious that will give you the insights, the information to bring it into your reality? Okay, it's simple. We work instead of on the law of cause and effect, this idea that I'm going to be the cause of bringing this into my life, which has a time lapse in it. We work on what a lot of people today are calling identity shifting. I don't like that term because I don't like identifying with something, but per se, not to be confused with the current climate and all that stuff, but this idea that I don't want to attach to an idea, but I get it. You do want to build this sense of beingness that I am being this type of person. If you want to be somebody that has 10 pounds more muscle, that's very different than wanting to have 10 pounds more muscle. Feel the difference in that. I'm being somebody that has 10 pounds more muscle. It's already done. That's who I am. That's how I see myself. That's the identity, as they would say, in identity shifting versus 
I'm wanting to gain 10 pounds more muscle. One implies all this work in the future and the other implies I already have it and all I have to do is catch up with it. So how do you create this feeling of being something when you're not it? That's the real trick and that's the secret of people that are successful. When they make it a goal, a decisive goal, they start to become it. They do everything they can to build, for lack of a better term, the identity of being that person. They be build the beingness of that person. So a runner, like my sister, actually, my sister was a, we got really into fitness using this principle. She built the beingness of being somebody that loves fitness. Her first week was all about falling in love with exercise, not about results. Buying a new outfit that she loved, working out just enough minutes to build a pump in the body so it felt really good, but not so much that she burned herself out or felt really tired the next day or got tired of it. Literally, we started with three minutes a day of her getting their muscles pumped and feeling really alive. And then every day going to work with that pump and then wanting to get that pump again the next day. Joining Facebook groups of people that were the same age as her that would cheer her on and then talking to those people every day. She started to do all the things that were fun for her to do so she could start to build this beingness, this identity of being somebody that loves to exercise. When you build enough of the identity and enough of the beingness, enough of the pump in your body for the exercise, enough of the the, scent, the camaraderie, the, the sense that I'm somebody that loves exercise, and you let go of this idea of the results in the beginning. It's all about now-based actions that make you feel really good, that activate endorphins in your body. Then you begin to build pleasure around the idea of being this person, this future person. You start seeing and feeling in your body literal pleasure when you see the new outfit you bought, you feel pleasure when you see the weights you were lifting because you got just the right pump. You see pleasure when you talk to your friends. You start to celebrate in your mind and in your journal, hopefully, every day that I'm becoming 1% more, 2% more of a person that exercises every day or often for the rest of your life. Somebody who loves exercise, somebody who's fallen in love with exercise. And after about a month, two months, three months, really building this identity, this beingness of somebody who's fallen in love with exercise and has pushed it just enough so that they don't activate too much of the pain side, but just enough of the pleasure side and really build the pleasure around this, they begin to become addicted to it. It becomes part of who they are. Then the results become a natural outcropping. Instead of looking at the photograph of them saying, I want to get to 10 pounds more muscle, they look at the photograph every night and say, I have 10. What does it feel like having 10 pounds more muscle? What does it feel like being so strong? And they release on any negative tone. I don't have 10 pounds more. No, energetically, I picture myself in the energetic realm, in the quantum realm as having 10 pounds more muscle because it has to exist in that realm. Every potentiality exists within the quantum realm, and that's how I see it. I don't see it as imagination. I see it as literally there's this guy with 10 pounds more muscle on his body, and I'm being that guy. I'm going to identify with that guy. That doesn't mean I don't see the physical me, but it means I prefer to enjoy the energetic me. And then I don't look for results. I keep seeing it. I keep working. I keep doing the work. I keep doing the workouts. I keep changing the workouts. But for one month, I don't look for results. Then I look back at the end of the month and say, how much more has my beingness caught up with this goal? And then I reset everything and do it again for the next month. And again, the key, real key is not looking back every day. Don't look in the mirror. Don't weigh yourself. Not for like a month. And then you can look back again in another month. And the whole point of this is to spend that whole month in learning to identify with and enjoy the process of of being that person now, today, and the next day, and the next day, and the next day, and really feeling and falling in love with your heart, your gut, your turn on with this new way of being till it takes you over. Eventually it will. Just like a, a pump, when you pump water from the ground, it doesn't want to come at first and you work really hard. Eventually it takes over and all that water starts going and the pump takes over by itself. This eventually happens to you. And that's what you want to cultivate. See, most people want it so bad. They look in the mirror every day. They weigh themselves every day. They push, push, push and force, force, force. And they stay in wanting. That's wanting energy, not being energy. And they end up burning themselves out. It gets really tiring and then they quit. And, they, and then the next time it's harder to do it. Why is it harder to do it? 
because basically they have an association with pain in their nervous system. They have, they're building a neural pathway of pain around, in this case, exercise, right? And they have to break down that whole neural pathway now and learn to reassociate the activity with pleasure. That can be done, but there's a dance and an art to move it from wanting to being, to enjoying, to loving it as an expression of who you are. And then think about it, you'll never stop. Now I wanna ask you, where in your life have you applied these two principles? Where in your life did you naturally build the beingness did you get out and you built pleasure and enjoyment and you identified maybe it was uh, for a lot of guys it's some type of sports like skateboarding and skiing snowboarding basketball they just started to get so into it they were becoming like especially in high school part of the group of kids that played that sport and that dressed that way and acted that way and that being this took them over until they started to live that way and it started to become part of who they are and then where in your life have you let wanting take over to the point it burned you out where you wanted it, but you just weren't building the beingness and the wanting just kept going until eventually your willpower fried itself out. And I want you to think about these two. And I'd love to see in the comments where you've experienced both if you have or where you you're stuck or where your challenges are. I love those comments. So definitely put a comment and I will be checking those out. And uh, hopefully you can see the difference here. I definitely would love to do a little bit more on this. So another thing I'd love to see in the comments is anything about this that you got more questions about, because I feel like I could do a lot more videos around this to really take it deeper, maybe bring in some real world examples and things like that, because this is just such a valuable principle. Um, I didn't even talk about the potentiality. So I'd love to do a video on that too. Maybe I'll do that one next, how you use potentiality to bring into your reality more of what you want, which is another aspect of the same thing. So hopefully you love this. Definitely got a lot of value out of it and definitely check out my previous video we'll have a link in here somewhere and remember only the confidence really live i'll see you in the next video